sacroiliac joint pain relief exercises. I'm Dr. Matthew Poza. Welcome to my page. My page is dedicated to people and families so they can live the life they are designed to live. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this information with the people we know need it the most. Listen, if you're suffering from sacroiliac pain, there's a huge thing that you need to look into because there are two types really of pain because there's the actual sacroiliac type of pain and then the other pain is more like a, a low back slash you can even get like the sciatica type of pain and they do feel really similar and in most cases I've seen a lot of patients come in where they're saying oh doc I got the sciatica but really it's a sacroiliitis which is the SI or sacroiliac joint that's where it's coming from. There's a few things I want you to look at. So if you got the low back pain, you're feeling it on the side, the question really comes down to, is it going all the way to your foot or does it radiating down to maybe around your knee, to the side, or some people it even wraps to the front. So they're gonna start telling you that they feel it in the front of their hip or even into their groin. Those are really common areas. Other people will start to, it's like an achy type of throbbing pain versus something like a sciatica, which could be like a hot knife. Some people describe it as like almost something like a water bead that's running all the way down to their feet or to their toes, uh, or it'll be like an electric type of feeling. Both of them suck, both of them hurt, both of them, depending on how you sit or how you stand or how you bend, you can get relief. So, or, or not, or you can get the opposite, you'll get pain. So they both have very similar qualities. However, the difference there is where does the pain travel? Where is it going? In the SI pain, I've even seen it in some people where it's gone up the back a little bit, but they feel like it started in the low back. So if that's you, I got three things that you can do at home that's gonna help you right away get that pain relief that you're looking for. If you have the, or if you think that you have the sciatica, then don't forget to watch some of my other videos that can get you the relief. Here's the first thing I want you to do. So you're gonna lay down on your back and you're gonna bring, so if let's say you have the SI pain on the left, you're gonna bring your knee as far up to your chest as possible. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel that stretch in the low back. So as you bring this up close to your chest as possible, you're really gonna feel that torsion. Keep your other leg down. So don't bring them both up at this point because what you wanna do is really create the separation between the left and the right. And that's really gonna allow for that joint to stretch out. Some people will even get a little bit more relief, not only when you bring the knee close to your chest and you just hold that, but what I would do is you could also bring it across your body a little bit, not past the midline, but over just enough, as you bring this over, over just enough, you're gonna feel it in your glutes, you're gonna feel it sometimes even through the hammies. But the point being is that you're getting right through that joint and that's gonna help you uh, relieve that tension that you're looking for. The other thing that you can do as a kind of like a general uh, stretch is bringing both up towards and almost rounding your back. So you're gonna feel this round at the base, you're gonna hold that for a couple seconds and then let go and you can repeat that as much as you want but if you are suffering a lot and you do have that pain i would try and do that in the morning again in the afternoon and then before bed just to give that movement back to the spine and that's going to help you relieve a lot of that tension the other thing that you can do um, in that position would be to be where you're stretching out the low back a little bit more so again you're back on your back and in this in this case, what you'll see is I'm going to take my foot, I'm going to put it underneath my knee. So you're going to see like my knee from my right leg is holding down my foot. And so what I can do in this case is I can control a little bit more the rotation in my back, but I'm putting some pressure on this side. And all I'm doing is as I apply pressure, I'm trying to open up that gap in the low back especially in that joint. So the joint runs this way and I'm trying to open that up. So I'm using my knee as a lever, holding that for about three to five seconds and then letting go. That in itself is gonna get you a ton of relief. Just as a way to modify that, what you can do is put your, so if you're standing, let's say you're at a bed 
or uh, even a couch, but usually typically a bed would be a good one. You could do this on a table, I guess, too. But if I got the pain in, let's say, my left hip, what I can do in that left SI, what I can do is standing up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my knee up and you can put it in different positions. Start by having just a straight bent knee and just working into it. So what you're doing is you're using the bent knee. So it'd be no different than bringing that knee to your chest, but in some people that would be difficult. So you can do that standing. If you really want to push it into there, then what you're going to do is take your leg across this way. And now what you can do is sit back a little bit. So now you're stretching out that hip completely. If you bring yourself over to the opposite side, you're going to get a different type of stretch. So you can use this method to go from side to side and really pinpoint where you're feeling that stretch. As soon as you do that, hold down, give that about three to five seconds, get that tension relief, and then you're going to feel so much better by the time you come up. And you can even repeat that on the other side if you need to, but generally that would be a really solid way to get that relief that you're looking for. One thing I do want to remind people is when you look at the low back, so this is where a lot of the pain is. And the reason why this is a little bit tricky is because if you have your sacrum in the middle and you have your pelvis on the side, so the SI joint or the sacroiliac joint runs deep on the side. So you can see there's two sides. So you got your left and your right. But when you look at it, it's actually quite a, comp a complex joint. It's got two types of joints within the same joint. So it's got a fibrous portion and it's got a capsular portion. So the SI joint itself, and especially as a chiropractor, somebody who works on this a ton almost every day, and you know, I see it in pregnancies, I see it in, in men, I see it in women, I see it in all types of ages. I mean, the reality is, is this joint gets used probably the most, uh, or one of the most used joints in your body from sitting to standing, walking, lunging, running, doing whatever you need to do. But the big thing with this joint is that it relies on a lot of other structures. And because it's related to the sacrum, and the pelvis, there's so many muscles that attach to this that it really does affect quite a few areas. And that's why you can get it into the bum, you can get it down your leg, you can get it come across. I mean, there's so many different reasons for that. So making sure that this area is balanced, that the nerves have no pressure on it, that the spine is balanced, that the hips, the pelvis, these are all the things that a chiropractor looks for. And when we adjust this and we make sure that this is right, then that is why the pains will go away. And that's why so many people get success under chiropractic care is because we're actually correcting and reestablishing the proper alignment in that area. And my last stretch and very easy one that you can do. So you could do this at your desk. You can do this at home watching TV. As long as you got a chair or something to sit on and do the figure four. So the figure four is really looking at breaking up also some of the surrounding muscles. So we're talking about in particular the piriformis muscle, which is one of the muscles that are deep inside the glute. And so as you bring one leg over, you're going to be pushing down a little bit and then bringing yourself forward. So you're bringing your torso forward, just like what we did with the standing version of this. But now what you're doing is you're pushing down. So if you are elderly or even if you got um, if you're pregnant, that would be a really good one where you can easily relieve some tension in through the low back. And all you're doing is pushing yourself forward, knee is coming down, and you're just holding that point of tension and then letting go. A really quick added bonus is you're going to squeeze your knees together, but I just want you to block it. So if you're going to use something else like a yoga block or something hard, um, then obviously make sure it's not pointy or anything like that. But really simply, I think if you take both of your fists and you just put them in between your knees and all you're going to do is squeeze your knees. A lot of people feel that in their low back, especially when there's a lot of tension. So it's a hold, it's a squeeze, and then you're going to let go. And just by doing that, again, you're resetting a lot of the muscles around that are going to help support your low back. If you got SI pain, try that. These are three simple and with that bonus extra uh, stretch or, or activation that you can do. These are some simple things you can do, but I give these to my patients all the time and it gets results. So try this, see how it goes. You can always leave a comment down in the comment section down below. And I really hope that you find the relief that you're looking for. Again, I'm Dr. Matthew Poza. 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this information. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.